Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about structured outputs. Now, structured outputs is a feature that got released by OpenAI sometime last week. And it was actually very quietly released in so many ways, but has really, really huge significant implications in the way we build these LLM powered applications moving forward. Now, if you have built any LLM application in the past, one of the things that you might notice is that getting consistent results or consistent output could be a little bit of an issue. Now, you know, with some clever prompting, you can, you know, get to a reasonably consistent output. And, you know, if you're using libraries like Langchain, which have um, tools like output parsers, it makes it much easier for you to, you know, actually get, you know, the right output. And I think OpenAI had already tried to solve this by using JSON, uh, JSON outputs as well. But what makes this a little bit different is that the model itself is now optimized specifically uh, for generating outputs that match specific schemas. And they've defined all of that in the documentation in this uh, page that you're looking at. So I'm just going to walk you through what this means for you and how you can leverage this in your applications, because this is a very, very, very big thing, especially for agentic um, applications as well. If you're thinking about building agents, typically you're relying on the model to make decisions and for it to be accurate, like when you're doing function calling or you're outputting information and sending it to another agent or another system, always important for you to have the right output uh, defined the way you want it, because that is where things start to break. So let's take a look at what this looks like very, very quickly. Uh, they actually released some impressive um, tests or evaluations showing that when you use the structured outputs uh, compared to not using it like if you're using like some of the older models because they've released this only for the latest models that were released because that was something that they did and that's why i say it was a little quiet because they released a new model but they didn't really make too much noise about it and that's just just uh, interesting but but i would say um specifically this is really this means a lot so you can see right here um this is 100 percent they they claim that the gpt 40 2024 0806 model can get up to 100% accuracy when you are using structured outputs to uh, output responses from the model or actually in function calling. So there are two ways you can use this newly released feature, the structured outputs, you can either use it in function calling. So defining your functions, uh, de defining the arguments you want the model to generate for your function calling, or you can actually use it in the response format, which is where you define what response you want um, out of your application. Now they've provided a number of examples in here as well, showing exactly how to use it. And I'll show you one example, which is something that I'm using in an application I'm building as well, but I just wanted to give you just a sense of what's going on here. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Now, fundamentally, uh, not much has changed from a function calling perspective. Um, essentially, you need um, the model to be set uh, accordingly to the latest model. So you see the, the model that is being set here. And also, when you kind of think about it, um, if you're, you're using it for function calling as well, you need to set strict to true. So those are the two things that you really need to do to use uh, structured outputs in function calling. Um, you're still expected to provide you know, your parameters. So as, as an example, in this case, they provided a set of parameters here, type object, you know, and then the properties of that particular object. All right, so the, the next way you can actually use structured outputs is in response format. So this parameter is typically set to either text or JSON, but now they've added JSON schema as one of the new options for your response format. This allows you to define specifically what type of output you want. So in this particular use case, as an example, this is an agent that basically helps to solve maths um, and essentially provide the steps required to solve a particular math problem. So here um, in the system, you're a helpful math tutor and the content says solve 8x plus 8. 31 equal to 
two, but we're saying, well, rather than just re return the response, this is the format that we want, right? So the name of the schema is going to be mat response. So that's the, what the schema should look like. And in the schema, we have one, an object, which has properties of steps. And inside those steps, uh, you have type array. So the first property in this object is an array. Uh, the next uh, property is called items and it has a type of object. Um, and then the next one is explanation, which is basically a string. And as you can see here, um, it also has this required flag, which indicates that these are the fields that are required whenever you're doing an output. Now, this is very, very essential when you're using um, structured outputs. You have to set these two values, um, all the values that are required. And then you have a final answer as another property, which is a of type string, and it's also required to provide the steps and the final answer. Now, they also provide like a ton of different examples. One of the examples that is getting me super, super excited is this example for generating UI um, elements. Now, I intend to make a video where I go into UI generation specifically because this is a fascinating topic that is coming up right now in the LLM application building space. Um, a lot of folks are beginning to use LLM to experiment with generating different types of UI components. Uh, Langchain has like a whole UI generation suite of examples, which they've been putting out over the past few weeks. So I'm going to be reviewing all these different UI generation examples and capabilities in another video where I dive deeper into that, because I'm very interested in seeing like how we use these solutions beyond chat or even within chat, because that's, that's, that's one of the things that's exciting is like you could have these hybrid experiences that are conversational, but also have these structured, uh, type components or UI components embedded into them. So I, I can't wait to dive into that because that is getting me really, really excited. Now, I just want to show you my own example. There's a lot, a ton of examples they provided as well. I just want to show you an example I'm experimenting with in within my own application. All right, so let's look at how structured output works within the context of an app that I'm actually building. This app simply uh, utilizes um, Google Trends to analyze keywords and give uh, some kind of uh, report showing um, you know, sort of analysis of that keyword, showing what type of content can be created around that keyword. So here we just have a simple prompt. Now the model has to be set to GPT-4 or 2024 0806. This is the latest release. This is the release that actually supports structured output. Now there are two, um, areas I'm going to be showing you one on the function calling side where I've defined a function. Now for the function calling, the only difference, and it's actually indicated here with this new is that you're adding strict equals to true. Um, as long as that is added, I think that is all you really need to do from a function calling perspective. You can see the parameters that I need to make a call to Google Trends. All we're doing is basically just defining those attributes right here. So we're defining geo as a string, the uh, gprop is an enum. So this is one of the things to keep in mind. Um, when they release structured outputs, they also release a bunch of supported types. So those would be strings, numbers, Boolean, object, array, enum, and any of. So these are the values that are currently supported. So check that. Um, and then we have a type string, we have a keyword list, um, which is an array of string, and we have a time frame, which is also string. And those are, are the values we need our assistant to generate from any query we provide. Uh, to be able to call our function, right? So that's basically the very first piece. Now, the second piece is your response format. Now, typically response formats was text and JSON object. Now they've added JSON schema. JSON schema is specifically unique to structured outputs. So this is where you can define your JSON schema. So as you can see here, I have my JSON schema defined. So what output am I expecting from the model when I provide information from my uh, Google Trends? Well, I expect a summary, a list of suggestions, and a list of content ideas. Once again, I'm defining those right here. So I'm defining my summary, a string, my suggestions as an array, and my content ideas as an array as well.
All right, so let's test it out. So I'm going to have this um, question. Analyze topics related to AI automation agency over the past year in the United States. So I'm going to run this. Now, the very first thing we expect to come back is our function call. So as you can see here, our function call has captured a geography as US. The Gprop is set to nothing because I have just given it um, it's a web. So web is typically, you know, a null value. Uh, the keyword list I have here is AI automation, AI agency, AI automation services, AI in business and AI technology. So it's passed in quite a few number of related keywords to the keyword I have provided, which is really, really cool. So it's doing some of that work for me. And then the time frame that it's using is today to 12 months. And this is the time frame uh, definition that PyTrends actually supports. So it, it's kind of understands that that's what I'm using to do this. Now I have an output, which I, you know, got from um, PyTrends already. As you can see here, our output is out and we can see summary suggestions and content ideas in JSON format. And that's because we have used the structured outputs uh, schema. I think this is going to be really, really important as you think about taking your applications and moving them into production very, very critical. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to be sharing uh, with you uh, an app that I've built that actually shows the illustration of this. I'm going to be dropping it in a repository called OpenAI Tutorials, which is where I'm going to be dropping different tips and guides and things that I come across as I build uh, these types of applications. Now, just something to keep in mind, I have been building these LLM pod applications nonstop for the past two, three years now and learning quite a lot um, as I kind of go along the way. I, in, I just use this channel to, um, you know, show what I'm building to, you know, share the, the things that I'm seeing, the experiences I'm having, uh, making sure that, you know, anyone who's out there who's thinking about building something can have them. So if you like this type of content, uh, consider dropping us a like and subscribing uh, so that you are notified whenever we release a video. We typically cover different topics, frameworks, different approaches to building, different um, sort of design thinking when you're thinking about building these applications, what's possible, what's not, and some tips along the way. I just basically, you know, we're all learning about this uh, incredible new way of building applications. And I just want you to uh, reach out if you have any questions or thoughts on, on, on some of the projects that you're working on. I'd like to hear about them. Until next time, see you later and have a great one. Cheers.